<laughs> hey guys, no here, and today we're talking about building your author brand in a special two-part collab with Meg Latour. I'm super excited to do this awesome collab with Meg. She is super talented and I love her content. I've been such a huge fan of her channel for such a long time. So if you haven't checked it out yet, make sure you do so. Meg, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hello everyone, thank you so much to Noah for having me. My name is Meg, I'm the host of the YouTube channel iWriterly where we create videos about how to be a successful modern day author. I'm also a science fiction and fantasy writer, developmental book editor, and former literary agent. Of course, thank you Meg again for being here. And if you haven't checked out Meg's channel, make sure you do so because she posts the best uh, advice for authors all the way from writing tips to promoting yourself to uh, querying agents, so check that out. And also leave a link to her channel and uh, all the places where she She's at in the description below. So today we're filming a two-part video, the first which is on Meg's channel, it's all about uh, author branding overview, such as what it is, why you need it, and uh, just general tips on how to build your brand. And the second, which is this one, is all about building a recognizable author brand through your social media and your books. Make sure you check out the other video at the end of this one because it's really helpful. And uh, let's dive in. Okay, so point number one. Uh, how to build your author brand starting with social, your social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. Now obviously you don't need to use all of these. It's best to choose one or two that you're comfortable with. It's good to have more if you can do that, but not everyone can uh, can basically post on all these places at the same time because that's overwhelming. So definitely choose a few that you feel comfortable with and um, basically share content that you think will be helpful for your audience. Um, if you are a fantasy author like me, you want to share uh, writing tips that relate to fantasy or maybe not even writing tips. You could just share um, things about tropes in fiction, things that people will enjoy and find relevant for them. And that way you will get the audience that you need through your social media and you will build friendships that way. I think one of the biggest mistakes kind of newbie authors, writers make is they make content for themselves. Things that they find interesting but not necessarily that their target audience finds interesting. So definitely carefully consider what your target audience actually wants to see. For sure. And going along that line, like what do you think uh, what kind of content do you think people should share, which is actually our point number two? Ah, yes, good, good one. Okay, so yes, let's talk about point number two, which is create content with intention. So uh, the way I like to think about it is to infuse every piece of content with value. What does your target audience want? So you'd mentioned this before, Nora, so writing tips. People are really eager about authenticity, even though in our previous video we did talk about that there's no exactly such thing as perfect so, uh, authenticity. There's pieces of yourself that you can share in a type of persona, but watch the other video if you guys want to learn about that. Uh, maybe your target audience will see vulnerability. Maybe you're querying a literary agent, you're in the trenches, you're on submission, or maybe you saw some bad reviews, you're published, and you just kind of want to share it, share the struggles, share some of the things that you've been feeling. Uh, maybe give glimpses into your writing journey. You could do humor posts, kind of like Noir with her fun uh, writing skits. You know, again, with creating content with intention, engage with followers, ask them questions. I think that's like the number one tip for like Instagram. Don't just talk about yourself. Ask your audience something like, oh, what did you guys think about this book? Or what do you do for this issue on a YouTube channel or author website? So always, always engage with your audience. And then in general, make awareness of your brand and what your brand can do for your target audience and whatever content that you create. For sure. And what you said about, you know, sharing on Instagram, even a simple question for your audience will get them engaged. So it, it even helps your, your channel or your uh, platform. So it's definitely helpful either way. And point number three, collaborate with other authors in your sphere to build friendships, work on joint writing projects, or do collabs the way me and Meg are doing right now. Um, you know, just as bu with building your social media presence, you can, uh, you know, help uh, each other grow by collabing or just building that author friendship. And it just helps engage your mutual audiences. Um, for example, me and Meg right now are sharing helpful advice on both our channels and it's get it's getting to our audience and that way we're we're consistently providing them that helpful content that we've talked about so they know what to expect and they can come back and uh, see both our videos and therefore we will gain more uh, loyal audience through this you know joint friendship 
And I think it's not just about kind of, you know, sharing audiences is definitely a benefit of doing collaborations. But for me, it's always been about connecting with like-minded individuals. If you're a writer, you're automatically kind of a weirdo in your community. No one 100% gets what the heck you're doing while you're holed up in your room or your office all the time. And then number two, if you're collaborating on places like YouTube, it's kind of that extra level of uh, stuff that you like there's just a lot of like weird things that happen on YouTube when you create videos and then you kind of like talking to other creators and oh this thing happened to me has this ever happened to you what would you do in this kind of scenario so it's really great to build friendships around like-minded driven people in my opinion exactly like especially with YouTube like you said there are so many struggles in just growing a YouTube channel or just you know figuring YouTube out along the way that you wouldn't expect anyone that's outside of YouTube to know. So it's just, it's kind of helpful to be like, hey, how do you do this? What do I do? <laughs> I'm yeah. in this issue, how do I fix it? So it's definitely a good thing to have. Agreed. All right, so let's talk about number four, which is share your journey as part of your brand. Not everyone is going to make how-to writing videos or blogs about writing or any type of content about how-to write, writing stuff. So for example, if you're a newer writer and this is your first book ever, you may not have tons of experience to create how-to content. So instead, many writers choose to share their journey as part of their brand. And they kind of will share as they learn, so does their audience. And it's kind of this very genuine, authentic kind of sharing of information. And they're not claiming to be an expert in any capacity and so this could be writing tips querying tips publishing insiders marketing ideas things that they're trying out and they'd be like this worked this didn't work and then in addition a lot of writers use this style of sharing your journey as a way to document their journey so maybe they're writing their first book ever they're hoping it gets published traditionally self-published indie whatever route you choose and this is their way of being like oh this is where my book started this was all the, the the struggles and the things that I went through and then it eventually got to this place because sometimes when you're at the finish line you forget about all the roadblocks to get to the finish line so that's a lot of a lot of writers like to document their journey as a kind of a, a memory for them and it's honestly fun to document it not just for you know like us but for the audience who will who might be going through the same experience and they want to see if you know if they have that same feeling in common or maybe they, they're not going through that yet, but they're about to uh, send their work out to publishers and agents, and maybe they just wanna see how that process will look like. So it's definitely helpful. And of course, uh, as with anything else, which leads me to point number five, you want to share, but not overshare, which we actually talked about in Meg's video. Do maintain some level of privacy when it comes to sharing your, uh, your journey. Um, obviously, it's so much fun to share what you, you're going through, but you also don't want to be complaining about your struggle every five minutes, uh, talking about how you are going to quit because things didn't go out your way. Basically, you don't want to look like a total mess and uh, for people to think that you're not really professional and that you're not really taking yourself seriously. So do share, but try to be um, to share in a way that brings positive light to your content and to you, who you are. That way people uh, can see you as a professional. I will add one quick thing to this is that when I was working at the literary agency, when I would see writers kind of really raging about the state of the industry and how literary agents or other industry pros are like, they're keeping good books from going on the market. I mean, if you want to be traditionally published and you're kind of uh, speaking unkindly or an unfriendly light about industry pros, the people that you want to represent you and eventually buy your book, that it's just not a good idea because you want to work with these people. So it's just not professional. And if you're not professional, people aren't going to want to work with you. So and everything, it's okay to be authentic, share some of your struggles, but do it kind of in a professional friendly light as Nora said. Mm -hmm. You don't want an agent to find, you know, your angry messages on social media and suddenly to tell other people to not get your book because that just messes your reputation completely. Yeah. It's just not worth it. If you have feelings and you really need to end things that are happening, just talk to your writer friends in private offline. You know, kind of commiserate about all the, the things that are happening if you're querying or maybe get bad book reviews. And that's just that's kind of like what your writer friends are there for they're there to be there for you and help you because they just they know on a deeper level what it's like absolutely and plus you'll get a more positive you know pep talk than on social media number six is it build a relationship with your audience so post content regularly if you want to build a relationship with them and really engage hear what your audience 
like what they're talking about, what they're interested in hearing. You won't know that unless you're kind of consistently engaging with them. So whatever platform you choose to be on a social media wise, be consistent. Most social media experts will say that you should post at least one video per week on YouTube, 15 to 20 tweets per day on Twitter, one picture per day on Instagram, one to two engaging posts, preferably posts with humor on Facebook. That is a crap ton of content and we can't all manage that. If we're usually we're writers, we're really busy writing something that we're doing out like we're doing on the side, it's a passion project. And then just in the time of the day to be doing all these things on social media. So pick like one or two platforms, engage consistently, see what your audience is interested in and what they want to talk about. Engage with your audience and see what they're interested in. This is especially true because a lot of us have a day job so that we can uh, cover the costs of our writing career. Because a lot of us, you know, writing isn't cheap, especially if you're going the indie route or even if you're going traditionally publishing and, and for traditionally publishing, uh, you still want uh, to market yourself. So you might want to spend a little bit to market yourself online. So it's not cheap. So a lot of us have a day job and can't really uh, manage all these platforms. So even for me, like I have my Twitter, but I barely use it and I'm bad about it and I'm trying to fix it. But one day I'll figure it out. <laughs> going off of what you said before, Kim Chance made a really, really good video. Uh, she interviewed an author. I cannot remember the author's name at the moment, um, but she interviewed this author who's traditionally published, has had a multiple book deals, and was talking about the nitty gritty finances if you're traditionally published and what kind of money you actually make. And I believe the average traditionally published author, if they're just talking about the income, I want to say after tax, it was like 30,000 a year. And if you live near New York City like I do, that's not very much. So, um, most people don't go into writing for the financial stuff and so you, you do have to be very mindful of these are passion projects and you only have a limited amount of time to write your book, edit it, and then do all these author branding, author platform stuff kind of on the side. And to point number seven, if you are already published, uh, you could actually help grow your author brand through your books. Um, for example, kind of like how Stephen King is known as the king of horror because that's the genre he writes. All his books are well known as horror and people that read his books are expecting horror or how Nicholas Sparks writes no romance and so everybody expects that when they read their book and obviously if Nicholas Sparks went ahead and wrote a horror everybody wouldn't know what's going on and they'd probably be angry because that's not what they expected when they opened the book to read it so um, having a consistent genre will help uh, build your author brand because you will attract the type of uh, readers that are interested in that kind of content when they go and uh, read your books and plus it keeps your audience coming back time and again because they know that you have the the genre that they love tip number eight is if you brand one book really well or maybe this single book really takes off with your audience and readers connect with it it can have them interested in other books or series that you've written or in subsequent books in the same series so this is a little bit of a wibbly wobbly definition so hang in there with me but you really want to always put your best foot forward in branding any book that either you publish or is published for you on behalf of maybe or by your publisher. So if you brand the first book really, really well, that may create interest in subsequent books in a series, other books you've previously published and so on. So I like to think about, I have a couple examples. So, and uh, you guys, if you're an author too, you probably know Jenna Marassi and she published the book, The Savior's Champion. And because that book was branded really well, it performed Formed really well a lot of people connected with it now there's hype basically for subsequent books in the series people are very excited about the next books another example is Victoria Schwab her um, one of her later series name is escaping me right now but it really took off and because her series took off now people are really interested in the books that she previously published that I think some of them were taken uh, down from the bookshelves and bookstores so again if you brand one book or series really well it might create interest in other books that you've written and I think uh, John Green similarly when he wrote The Fault in Our Stars it got uh, it built traction for his older books like I think um, Looking for Alaska so people start reading his books from 10 years before so same thing uh, having that one book definitely, uh, you know, leads to other books, which leads to other books. And, and so it's always important to not give up and just kind of uh, keep working towards what you have, because eventually people will enjoy everything that you have, not just what you have right now. 
And point number nine, do you need a pen name or should you go with your own name? What's actually good for you? Now, I don't think there is a right or wrong when it comes to choosing your own name or a pen name, but it's important that once you've decided on a name, you stick to it because that's the name that people will know you by for the rest of your career. For example, JK Rowling is very well known as JK Rowling. If she went ahead and changed her name to something else, and I know that's uh, you know a pen name of hers because her full name is What's her full name? Joanne? Joanne, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like Joanne Rowling. So if she went ahead and changed her name completely, no one will recognize her and they might not read her books. JK Rowling is a name that is branded um, and people recognize Harry Potter when you say JK Rowling. So uh, definitely stick with a name once you've decided on it. Don't change it every five years or else no one will know who you are and you will confuse your current readers. And they might think that you just walked off the face of the earth. I think too, if you're branding yourself, it's a lot of work to brand a certain author name. So if you're swapping it, you're kind of you know, hurting yourself a little bit because then readers don't have that same brand recognition. So Coca-Cola, we see those glass bottles, we know what to expect. But if like people see your one author name, they'll also be like, no, 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 I'm gonna do this. And it's just, it's confusing. It's easier for readers just to be consistent, but it's okay if you have multiple pen names, um, if you write in different genres, for example, I think, um, Joanna Penn from The Creative Pen. She has a bunch of different pennies. Let's move on to number 10. What should you name your brand? So before we we're talking about author pen names, so now we're just going to talk about straight up brand names. When you're considering a brand, consider whether or not you want to brand your name, so your author name, or have a specific brand such as I writerly. One of the benefits of having a brand that isn't your author name is that it's easier if you intend to write under multiple different pen names. And I feel like we discussed this in this video or another video, um, but. I, you know, I, I knew I wanted to write under adult science fiction and fantasy and I eventually want to write romance books as well. And so for me, it made sense to have I write really as our brand name because I plan on having multiple different pen names that I write under. Another benefit of having a brand separate from your author name would be if you hope to grow your brand into a company one day. Uh, many indie authors, for example, start their own publishing companies and maybe they want to publish other people's books. And so to have a name that isn't your author name can be beneficial for that reason. And point number 11, now this is mainly for indie authors since uh, traditionally published authors might not have control over that. Um, when it comes to your books as an indie author, you can uh, control how the font of your actual name on your books looks like. So you, could, you should maintain the same font across all your books. That way people recognize it immediately. Like obviously they will recognize that, that that is your name if they read it, but it just kind of helps subconsciously. It's kind of like your logo, like, you know, the Coca-Cola logo. People just know this is you. Um, when they see your books, they will recognize it. And it's just maintaining that consistency that we've talked about. Let's move to point number 12, which is use the same author photo, bio, username across all social media platforms. So in short, if you are on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, uh, for example, iWriterly, you'll find iWriterly is the at iWriterly across all of our social media platforms. It's really easy for people to find us rather than having different usernames for different platforms. It's possible that it's not going to matter. Like I think of Christine Riccio, she's got different usernames across every single platform she's on. It's very confusing, but people love her and so they find her anyways. But in general, you do want to make it easier on your followers or your target audience. Um, it's easier for people to find you and it's easier for people to identify you. And last but not least, point number 13, be true to who you are. I mean, at the end of the day, even if you are acting as your author brand persona, don't try too hard to be someone that you're not. People can easily tell when you're faking, especially if you aren't really, uh, you know, good at the type of personality that you're trying to fake. So for example, if you're trying to be funny when you're not, just don't, it's, it, people will be like, why is she being weird, you know? So just be authentic. Uh, tr if you're, you know, witty, go with that. Uh, find your strengths, use those, and don't try to be like some other author in the community because, you know, you are unique to yourself and you probably have strengths that that author doesn't. So just use those to your advantage. 
So there you have it. Those are our tips for building a recognizable author brand using your books and social media. Thank you so much again, Meg, for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. This was a lot of fun. It really was. Uh, thank you all for watching this amazing collab with the awesome Meg Latour. Be sure to check out her video and her other uh, content on her channel, which I'll leave in the description below. So go check that out. And um, I will also leave uh, links to her uh, platforms below. So go and follow her everywhere because she's awesome. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. And if you're looking for a community of writers, you can uh, join my Discord server. We are always chatting and helping one another. So make sure you go and do that. It's also in the description. And remember, North for presidents. <laughs>